All right, let's go to this conversation now. Police Minister Peggy Tele has expressed unhappiness over the fact that some police stations have not set up their GBV desks. These desks are meant to deal with gender-based violence and femicide cases. Now, the minister had promised that these desks will be ready by month end. Let's speak now to Lisa Vetten, who's a researcher and project consultant on gender-based violence at the University of Johannesburg. Lisa, always a pleasure to speak to you. The minister says these desks, of course, are meant to help address some issues around gender-based violence and he says that uh, this will also assist to address that issue of uh, capacity. I wonder how much of a difference will such desks make at police station level? It's hard to say because you know before we had gender-based violence desks we had victim-friendly rooms and victim empowerment centers. So the question we must ask is has the minister inquired into what made those particular initiatives unsuccessful and how the gender-based violence desk is going to be any different. I mean, I think what he's doing is the classic problem we have in South Africa is we consistently confuse form over function. By that I mean we set up a structure and think that the structure is going to do the magic and it's going to change the situation. Whereas it's actually, are the people who work in that structure adequately trained? Do they know what the law is? Are they empathic? Are they linked to a series of referral networks in order to get women to shelters or to other counselling services? And those questions he doesn't ask. He just he just says to us, we're setting up a desk without telling us what are the qualifications and skills and capacities of the people who are going to be working at those desks. And listening to what you're saying, the minister even saying that, uh, you know, some of the officers, their conduct is concerning, despite the fact that they themselves have received training. So certainly a lot of worry around the issue of training. Yes. I mean, I think there's been quite a lot of uh, attention to the quality of police training around gender-based violence. One of the issues that's come out is that the, peop is that the police tend to get lecture-based training, when what they really need are practical scenarios that will help them to say, how do I deal with the complexities of domestic violence? What do I do when I'm faced with this kind of case versus that kind of case? And that's where the police really seem to struggle. The other area where they really struggle and they really need guidance is around arrest. Hmm. Now, they, they sued quite often for unlawful arrest in the cases of domestic violence because they don't know what to do. And Lisa, when we talk about, you know, the issue of training, you say that it's, it's lecture based, but also, um, you know, another concern has been the capacity um, when it comes to investigating some of these cases, because as you say, some of them are quite complex and they do need quite a bit of resources, um, you know, put towards them. Do you think there's enough, though, uh, when it comes to capacity around, you know, dedicated officers who will look at even some of these complex matters you talk about exactly because it's got to it's got to work at two levels you've got to have skills in the client service center where women will come in and be received but you've also got to have skills at the investigation side and you can see the difference that good investigation makes in the case of um Nogutulo, Nogutulo Shoba. that made a real difference because you had good investigation that looked at linking different cell phone towers etc etc in many cases, you don't have that kind of quality of investigation at all. When you've just seen that, you know, that if you talk about rape, the backlog in the analysis of toxicology as well as, as um, crime kits. So you've got to have capacity at a range of different levels. We've also had presentations to Parliament where, you know, we've heard things like a quarter of police, of, of police detectives have never been on any kind of detective training course. So you've got to make a whole lot of things work. You can't just set up a desk. You've got to have lots of other things in place in order to make a meaningful impact on gender-based violence. And also, um, you know, Lisa, one of the things that, that even comes to mind is that some of the victims talk about how they get turned away at some of the police stations and they are sometimes told, um, you know, go and, uh, you know, talk about it or they simply, is there nobody to be able to assist them or even a friendly room where they can be able to, to you know, to, you know, speak to the police officers, but also sometimes that disconnect between them and the officers and the kind of questioning that they receive. I wonder, apart from training and the issue of capacity, where would you say the disconnect lies? Because when we listen to what the minister says, you'll hear that there's tough talk. We are going to be doing this. We need to make sure that it, the numbers come down. But then we see something different at grassroots level. Where would the disconnect be? I think a lot of it lies at the, at the level of whoever is in charge of stations. 
Now, you, when you start looking at the research that's been done, especially around domestic violence, you can see that there are some stations that very definitely are getting it right. And the question you have to ask is, why do those stations who have police officers who, just as, who have been through the same training as everybody else, who have as few resources as everybody else, why is it that they can do a good job? What is different between those stations and those stations where we persistently have complaints? So I think, you know, the real problem here is that the police don't make use of research that would help them to understand what it is that is contributing to some good performance and, and a, lot of very bad, a, a lot of very bad performance. And that, I think, is about the kind of station culture. So it's understanding what are the norms and values in place at particular stations. How seriously do individual officers take domestic violence? Is, do they have a station commander who sees this as a priority? Or do you have a station commander who thinks that victim empowerment is not proper police work? And so the police officers who are a nuisance, who they don't consider to be good police officers, they go and dump in the victim empowerment center or the gender-based violence desk because it's a way to get rid of them and, and take them out of what they consider to be proper policing work. So, you know, it's, it's at that level we need to understand what's going wrong. Mm. And another layer, um, you know, Lisa, and I wonder, um, in your view, especially because you've done a lot of work around this, that is also, um, you know, likely to be problematic because it's one thing to have these gender-based violence stations at police level and they do the work and they do investigate. But we do read, um, you know, some of the disturbing reports when, you, when it comes to some of the courts. Um, you know, recently, even Palm Ridge not having some... Um, you know, a, fun a functional recording device, the CCTV that is required for, you know, some of the victims to testify in camera also at some point was not working. That is just one, um, you know, of, of these incidents. I wonder how much of a setback is it going to be? Should an investigation be done, uh, you know, at station level, but then you come to the courts and then you have to have these kind of difficulties? Yes, absolutely, because I think we must understand this as a system. You know, you, you can get the police working, but if the courts aren't working, if you don't have social services in place, if you don't have good health uh, workers who can do good forensic examinations, for instance, then that undermines whatever good work the police are doing. So I think here we have to look at the prosecution level. One of the things that was really quite concerning to me is most recently you had the NPA saying, telling Parliament that, you know, usually they train about 2,000 prosecutors, but due to the impact of COVID, they've only trained about 500. Now, we know that the, se the specialized sexual offenses courts were already running at quite a high vacancy rate of specialized prosecutors. So you have to wonder, given this impact on the level of training of, of prosecutors, what that's going to mean for access to specialized courts and specialized prosecutors, and whether you're going to see a lot of very inexperienced prosecutors now taking on sexual offenses, or whether you're going to see long delays for cases to be finalized, because there's a, there's a need to look for prosecutors who are experienced. So, yes, we've got a lot of problems, I think, to sort out as well um, following the, the lockdown and the impact that had on the criminal justice system. All right, Lisa, thank you so much for your time. And uh, we'll certainly look closely to see, um, you know, the work that is being done around uh, these particular desks. And as you say, very critical to note as well, the training um, that goes into this. Thank you so much for your time. That was uh, Lisa Vettin. She's a researcher and project consultant on gender-based violence at the University of Johannesburg.